Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to install and play Windows games that you may purchase outside of Steam on either Desktop Linux or the Steam Deck. So chances are you, you've probably heard of the Steam Deck. This is a games console that's developed by Valve, and it uses a technology called Proton, which at its core is a compatibility layer that allows you to play Windows-based games on Linux. Now the concept is simple, you install the game as normal through Steam, you press the big old green play button, and in most cases, the game will launch as expected. Now of course you will have some games that are not supported, and usually they are games that have online competitive elements, so for example shooters, and the reason they are not supported is due to the anti-cheat systems that they employ, but in most cases, you'll find that 9 times out of 10, the game will launch and play as expected. But what happens if you've got some games that you purchase outside of Steam? How do you run these games on desktop Linux or the Steam Deck? For example, you might have Apex Legends or Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which you purchase through the EA app. Or maybe you have the Far Cry series through Ubisoft Connect. Or maybe even Rocket League or Fall Guys from the Epic Games Store. Or maybe you've even chosen to pick up some of the games that they gave away for free. Or finally, maybe you have classics installed such as World of Warcraft or the Diablo series, which are exclusive to the Blizzard's Battle.net. Well, the solution in this case is to use Lutris which is a universal platform for all these previously mentioned game stores, plus many others. I'll also point out that Lutris does have support for standalone games, such as League of Legends, as well as a wide variety of game console emulators that are available natively on Linux. So really, in other words, if you've got a game outside of Steam's, then chances are Lutris is going to have a method of running it. In fact, the nearest equivalent that I can think of that's available on Windows to Lutris is probably GOG Galaxy 2.0, but in either case, let's crack on with the video and let's get Lutris installed. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install the latest supported GP driver for your hardware, which in most cases is going to involve you installing and using either the NVIDIA proprietary driver, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, or the AMD kernel and user space RADV or MESA drivers if you've got AMD hardware. In most cases, when it comes to using AMD hardware on Linux, in theory, if you've kept your system up to date, then you're already running the latest available GPU drivers as they're typically bundled, pre-installed as part of your overall Linux installation. But how up-to-date your drivers are going to be is going to differ depending on your choice of distribution. For example, if you're using something such as Arch Linux, Fedora, or even Pop! OS, then you'll be running more recent AMD drivers in comparison to something that's a bit more conservative. For example, Ubuntu, or Linux Mint. However, for most people, assuming of course that you keep your system up to date, you should be good to go. Now one final thing just to bear in mind, I would not recommend that you install the drivers that are available for Linux on the AMD site, as the reason for that is that they're more designed for workstation use, not for gaming. Now alternatively, if you're part of Team Green and you've got an Nvidia graphics card, then you will need to install the official proprietary driver manually, which if I'm honest, it's dead easy, and it's identical to the method that you employ on Windows. In other words, you download the driver, you install it, and then reboot your system. Simple as that. In fact, many Linux distributions nowadays do either pre-install the driver for you as part of the overall installation process. For example, PopOS does that, and so does Ubuntu. Or they'll offer some form of GUI tool that allows you to install the driver post-installation. An example of that is Manjaro Linux, which has a great utility called the Hardware Configuration, which is supplied as part of their Manjaro setting manager. Or if you're using Linux Mint, there is the driver manager application. But again, much like AMD, I would not recommend downloading the drivers available on the NVIDIA website. Now, alternatively, if you wish to go down the terminal route, there is an excellent documentation on the Lutris wiki, and it covers the installation of both AMD and NVIDIA hardware for a wide range of Linux distributions, including Arch, Ubuntu, Fedora, Manjaro, and OpenSUSE. But really, in either case, once you're happy that you've got your drivers up to date, we can move on to the next part of the video, which is installing Lutris itself. So, when it comes to installing Lutris, you'll find that there's many methods of doing this. However, my recommendation would be to look at installing Lutris as a flat pack. And the real reason behind that is that it's twofold. First, it's always going to ensure that you won't have any missing dependencies for any game stores. In other words, regardless of what distribution you decide to go with, the environment that you're going to be using is going to be the same. And I'll also point out that Lutris can only be installed as a flat pack on the Steam Deck due to the immutable file system that's used by that device. 
and second, using the Luchas flat pack will ensure that you're always running the latest version, so that if any bugs do get through, they'll be fixed in a timely manner. So to install the Luchas flat pack, first we need to enable flat pack support for your system using the relevant Linux distribution instructions. Although if you're using Pop! OS, Fedora, Linux Mint or the Steam Deck, then you can skip this step as you've already got flat pack support enabled by default on these systems. Now, in my case, since I'm using Ubuntu for this video, I'm going to be following the instructions for Ubuntu. But in either case, once you've installed your flat pack support, to install Lutris, simply click on the install button at the top, which will begin the Lutris flat pack installation process, and it's going to use your distribution software store, which in most cases is either going to be GNOME Software or KDE Discover. So once the installation process is finished, launch Lutris as you normally would do from your application launcher. So the default interface for Lutris is simple but powerful, and there's really a lot to cover with this application, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you how to install an external game store. Now in my case, I've already pre-installed Battle.net, EA App, the Epic Game Store and Ubisoft Connect. But to show you the process, let's reinstall the latter, which is Ubisoft Connect. So the first thing we need to do is click on the big old plus button at the top, gives the option here where it says search the Lutris website for installers and then we're going to search for the word Ubisoft and it should display the option here where it says Ubisoft Connect so let's click on that and we know we have three options I'm going to go with the one at the top which is Wine the latest so let's click on install specify where we want to install it which by default will be in your home directory and then press continue to start the process that's just going to ask me to review what I'm going to download, the installer, that's correct. So I'll click install. Now the installation process should be mostly automatic, but you may get a prompt at one point to install some additional dependencies. So if you do get that prompt, just click yes to confirm. So as you can see, the process is now finished. So let's click on close. So to launch Ubisoft Connect, you can either double click on the icon or select it and then just play at the bottom. Now the first time that Ubisoft launches, you might find that there's an update to be applied and then a prompt to sign into your account. But really, once you've done all that, you should see what I'm seeing on the screen now, which is a list of all the games that are available, as well as the ones in your library. You're ready to install a game. It's straightforward as it always would be. Click on the game, click on the option to download. And then once the process is finished, click the play button and play as you normally would do. Now, in most cases, you should expect the games that you installed to launch correctly. Unless, of course, they're not compatible with Linux, which is usually due to the anti-cheat that the developer employs. But really, you just want to repeat the same process for all these other game stores that you may want to install, which you've currently got your game libraries with. So before I bring this video to an end, I'm just going to make a point that there's one final thing to show you about Lutris, and that's that it has direct integration with many third-party services. So for example, under the sources, you might see that I'm signing to my GOG account, my Epic Games account, EA account, Ubisoft account and Blizzard Battle.net. Gives you a nice overview of what games you can install using Lutris. But with that, you're all done. So in conclusion, although this video really only scratches the surface of what Lutris can do, for the purpose of using alternative game stores or launchers, especially on Linux, it does the job very, very well. As always, thank you very much for watching the video today. If you found it helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video so other people can see it, and if you want to support me in what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll catch you again very, very soon. Cheerio.